Samson, the folly of a middle-aged man. Samson has been 20 years judge of Israel. He's been living in the cave at Etam for some long time. He's a middle-aged guy. And the encounters of chapters 14 and 15 of Judges, they're now a little way in the past. And Samson has lived in his seclusion at Etam, alone in his cave, visited, of course, for the judgment of disputes and the services that he would offer as an ancient tribal leader, but living apart from his people for fear of bringing down upon them the wrath of the Philistines. Remember, the people of Dan have no walled cities. They live in tents. They're the peasants amongst the tribes of Israel. They've got no defensive structures. And Samson has been performing this role of stirring up the Philistines so that the people who've acquiesced in Philistine overlordship realize the wrong of it. And that the quiet conquest of Israel that's gone on bit by bit, Philistine ideas and society and culture and religion seeping in quietly, a line has been drawn in the sand by Samson's activity. And as he lives up there in this cave, away from his people for their protection, largely worked apart from affairs like the showdown of Jawbone Hill, remember that? The policy seems to be working apart from that. There are puzzled looking faces because they weren't here for the showbone, showdown at Jawbone Hill. <laughs> You'll have to go find it on, on uh, YouTube. There you go. What we know pretty well about Samson, though, in all of that, marvellous, outstanding leader. I mean, tremendous exploits done in the name of God. Tremendous service performed for the people by pointing out how far they've slipped without noticing into godlessness. What we know about him, all that being the case, was that he was still definitely a bit of a boy for the girls. Now, you might want to say that could be worse, but actually it's his downfall. He had a clear tendency towards falling in lust with unsuitable women. And by middle age, that tendency has become the habit of his life, and it's about to become his undoing. It is scary, Colin. The relationships we form very much determine the people we're able to be in our devotion to, in our service of the living God. And Samson has got this thing left there, stuck in his life, that he hasn't dealt with. And so Samson, even in middle age now, he doesn't always do his thinking with his head. And now he's approaching lonely middle age. And it's not getting easier. It's not getting better. Ladies, you might have noticed, something really odd can happen to men's thinking as they approach middle age. Good men. And Samson wasn't completely a good man. He's a flawed hero. His gifts and this worldly preeminence that he's got have been deployed previously to cover the cost of his sinful behaviour. The sins of the gifted and the talented can run further, can run faster, because the gifts and their talents give them legs to run further and faster than the rest of us from the consequences of their sin and to cover it. That's what Samson has done. I could cite politicians, I could cite the powerful in the government, the state, the church. Such influence and leadership as you have can get you deeper in the mud because of your increased ability, because of your gifting, your talent, your power, to drag yourself on through the stuff. You can understand why, as James writes in the third chapter of his epistle to Jewish believers, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. When we're in positions like that, we'll be judged more strictly. So here's Samson, the middle-aged man, falling for one after another unsuitable woman, and there's something pathetic about it. Because here's this immensely strong man who's not strong enough to say no to himself. He can say no to a thousand Philistines at a time. cannot say no to himself. And that's his tragedy. And that's the tragedy of the people of God that he's serving in his day. Because he embodies their errors. They can't say no to Philistinism. He embodies their errors in himself. 
sih semua orang lain.